now uh, towards the end i want to also show you one thing and that is how you can extract the mode shapes uh, from e tabs mode shape vectors actually from e tabs once you run the modal analysis of any multi story building and we will also confirm one thing and that is uh, the modal orthogonality actually so let me quickly review the concept of mode shapes in like 5 10 minutes and then i'll come back to show you one example multi story building and how you can extract mode shapes and then how we can confirm that they have those specific properties which we generally discuss in our structural dynamics courses so let me first start with this concept that uh, mode shapes are the inherent properties of our structure they are not dependent on applied loading they are actually uh, the shapes which your structure wants to have while vibrating in a free vibration manner so if the structure is given a choice to vibrate in certain shapes it will select these shapes actually the free vibration response of any multiple degree of freedom system any multi story building like this it is composed of the contributions from different mode shapes so here this animation is showing you the three first three mode shapes of a multi story building and the random looking response of that building is actually described as a sum of the superposition of these uh, mode shapes these modal properties are also sometimes called as the heartbeat of our structure because they give us uh, the natural behavior or habit of our structure if the structure is in future subjected to a dynamic loading how it is going to react so these mode shapes and natural time periods and all other modal properties are estimated from generally the eigen value analysis also sometimes uh, called as modal analysis and it is actually solving for the free vibration response when there is no damping and when there is no applied loading you only have the mass and stiffness of the structure you can get mode shapes and time periods so they indicate the stiffness and mass relationship for any model or any structure and uh, they are very useful in structural health assessment and uh, and also understanding the dynamic behavior of the building so they are rightly called as the heartbeat of the structure just like any doctor can tell whether the person is uh, healthy or not by checking few vitals these modal properties natural time periods and frequencies and mode shapes they are the vitals of our structure so i'll skip all that detail and directly go to e tabs now that if you run that eigen value analysis how you can actually assess how how you can actually uh, extract those mode shapes first and then uh, we will see that they are orthogonal also uh, one of the property which mode shape vectors have is called the orthogonality property let me quickly review it here first so that when i show you in excel you will be able to relate so there are several applications of modal analysis which i have discussed in many of the videos and lectures so i'll skip all that detail so here um, i'll discuss one quick property of mode shape vectors that they are orthogonal to each other which means i directly go to the orthogonality property and that is this one that for example if you have a, a particular mode shape vector phi i you take its transpose let's say this is your first mode shape vector uh, for example this is the that shape and for each story level you have the number which is arranged in that vector you take uh, transpose of that vector times the mass matrix times another mode shape let's say the second mode shape this one when you take that product it will be zero whenever i and j are not same so any two mode shapes are orthogonal to each other uh, if if they satisfy this condition and they will always satisfy this condition whenever you have i and j same Uh, then you will have a non-zero answer. 
but whenever i and j are different i not equal to j you will have zero as an answer uh, this can be also written in another form and that form is that uh, for example if i make one capital phi matrix which is composed of all the mode shapes of a structure so first mode shape as first column second mode shape as second column and keep on doing it until i summarize all mode shapes if i have this column this matrix then i can write the orthogonality property in another form which is capital phi transpose matrix times the mass matrix times the capital phi again the resulting matrix will be a diagonal matrix it will have all off diagonal values as zero and the diagonal values will be uh, the non zero values only and the diagonal entries are called actually the modal masses so all the modal masses will be in the uh, diagonal of this you can say this uh, matrix so uh, first number will be the modal mass for first mode second number will be the modal mass for second mode then third mode and all the diagonal values will be modal masses so this is an alternate form of uh, the orthogonality property now let's what uh, we will doing be in, in next few minutes is that uh, let's take one example building extract the mode shapes from e tabs and construct the capital phi matrix construct the mass matrix and take that product and see whether the diagonal values are non zero and off diagonal are zero or not this will confirm the modal orthogonality so i'll be skipping all that detail directly going to the orthogonality property here and e tabs demonstration here you can see that uh, this is the same thing that if you can take that product only the off, diagonal terms will be non zero and off diagonal will be almost zero and the diagonal values are actually the modal masses modal masses now lastly one more concept is about the normalization of mode shape you can normalize the mode shape vector in two ways two common ways one is that you make the roof number equal to 1 and all other values are relative to that roof number the second uh, normalization scheme is that that you normalize mode shape such that the modal mass calculated for each mode is 1 which means that in that case this will become as the identity matrix so mode shapes can be normalized in number of manner but two common ways to normalize mode shapes is that first you 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 have uh, uh, you have the peak number as 1 so the roof number is set to 1 and all others are calculated relative to that and second is such that that this product the modal mass is always equal to 1 right so whenever you multiply a particular mode shape transpose times mass times the same mode shape again you should have a non zero value but that non zero value should be equal to 1 which is the modal mass so you normalize mode shape such that the modal mass for each mode is 1 e tabs actually normalize the mode shapes in this second manner if you extract mode shapes in e tabs uh, you and you take that product you will see that the modal mass for each mode will be one so they are automatically normalized this way but if you go for perform 3d or any other program you might be seeing that the normalization scheme can be different also that for each mode the roof number is one for first mode let's say this is 1 and all others are relative to that similarly for second mode this is equal to 1 and all numbers are relative to that so in other programs the first scheme can also be used but the second one second is the one which is used by e tabs so we will be seeing that in a moment also so now let me go to e tabs and show you that uh, uh, that multi story building model an example model and extract the mode shapes and show you that they are orthogonal so let me click on open and let me open an example building which i just uh, prepare for this demonstration so this is an example building a multi story building very regular building with a rectangular plan view and i think this will be serving the purpose well for the purpose of this demonstration 
so i have already assigned everything all the inputs are there the modal analysis is run already the mass source is defined already in this so i'll directly show you the mode shapes of this building the modal analysis is run already so if i show you the set load cases to run uh, you can see that uh, the modal case is run already in this so let me directly go to display and uh, story response plots this will show me the story responses and i will go for the modal case so let me first select in the display type as diaphragm center of mass displacements this is the option which is going to give me mode shape vectors so i select the diaphragm center of mass displacement the case or combo is modal and mode number is selected as 1 so this figure is telling me or showing me the first mode shape it is the fundamental sway mode for this 10 story building and you can see that it has a typical pattern of a typical shear building kind of a mode shape frame building so if i want to extract its values i can click on this formatted option and this will give me the tabular form of these modal ordinates so this first mode shape is the primary mode shape in y direction right so this is the y direction first mode shape so you can see here that this red color is belonging to y direction so therefore the y direction values this is the this is the modal vector for this building uh, for uh, for first mode this is phi 1 actually so you can copy that in excel similarly you can go for uh, second mode in y direction if you click on uh, mode number 2 you will be seeing that it is the same fundamental sway mode but now it is in x direction so which means that if you are if you want to to have the second mode in y direction then you should go for the next modes like third fourth fifth so there is a more uh, clear way to identify which mode is in which direction by clicking on display and show tables and go to the analysis and results and then in the modal results you can go for modal participating mass ratios and click okay the resulting table will give you an idea about which mode is in which direction primarily now you can see that the first mode mode number 1 has an 82% mass participation in y direction so it is the first mode in y direction then the second highest participation in y direction is in the fourth mode which is around uh, 10% so the fourth mode is actually the the second mode in y direction similarly then mode number 7 have the third highest so this is the third mode in y direction so if i highlight the first three modes in y direction they are mode number 1 mode number 4 and mode number 7 similarly the x direction modes are first mode is mode number 2 based on the modal mass participation mode number 5 and then mode number 8 these are first three modes in x direction so you can animate them or you can plot their values in the same story responses and you can confirm that these modes have the same shape for example let me now have uh, the story response this is the story response for mode number 2 which is the first mode in x direction now we know that the mode number 5 is the second mode in x direction so if i plot mode number 5 by typing 5 here you can see that this is the second mode shape now so it is confirmed that second mode is the the x direction second mode is actually the mode number 5 according to the software numbering similarly the mode number 8 will be the third mode in x direction so if i type mode 8 you can see that the shape is like third mode shape similarly in y direction also you can identify first second third fourth all mode shapes and then using the same option the tab table option you can always uh, extract these values and plot in excel also so using this option i have actually 
save these mode shape values let me show you for this example 10 story building so these are first four modes in x direction and y direction which i have just taken from e tabs so this is x direction mode 1 mode 2 mode 3 mode 4 so this is the base value and obviously this is the roof value so i just arrange them in this manner so uh, this is first four modes similarly this is the first four modes in y in x direction so i have the first four modes in both directions graphically they look like this you can plot it along the story height so this is mode 1 mode 2 and then mode 3 and mode 4 these are the first four modes which i directly extracted from e tabs and now you know how to extract them one more thing which i did here is the i constructed the lump mass matrix for this model and i arranged all the story masses in the diagonal and all off diagonal terms are zero so this will give me a 10 by 10 mass matrix and these story masses i can also extract from e tabs i after running the analysis i can go to display and show tables and in the structure results i can also go for center of mass and rigidity i can click on this option and i can click ok this table will give me the mass for each story and uh, the location of the center of mass also so all these story masses are available for me in my units i can arrange them in a diagonal manner and i can construct the mass matrix so this is my mass matrix which i have already constructed uh, you can see that in e tabs uh, the values are in pound second square per fit but uh, in my excel sheet they are in they are also in pound second square per fit i think i used a different mass source uh, when i run this analysis Yes, I think I used a different mass source when I run this analysis. So the number, although for story, each story mass is constant, but the number is different from what I'm using in, in my, this example. But this way you can extract the story masses uh, from E tabs also. Uh, then in Excel sheet, I directly have calculated that product, which is capital fee transpose I am just constructing the capital fee matrix by having only four modes. Ideally, the building can have like many modes, uh, but I am just considering first four modes. So I, using these mode shapes and the mass matrix which I constructed, I uh, carried out this multiplication, capital fee transpose times uh, mass times capital fee again. Uh, I get this answer and that is you can see here that uh, uh, only the diagonal values are equal, equal, almost equal to 1 and off diagonal terms are almost equal to 0. So which means that the mode shapes are naturally normalized by E tabs such that the modal masses for each mode is 1. Uh, but if I normalize them such that the roof value is 1, so I, I divide each entry by the roof entry so that the, they are normalized now. In that case, the diagonal entries will not be 1, but off diagonal terms will still be 0, you can see here. So this confirms the modal orthogonality property. So depending upon how you normalize the mode shapes, your off diagonal entries will be different, but uh, your, your diagonal entries will be different, but your off diagonal entries will always be 0. So this confirms that mode shapes are orthogonal to each other. Uh, and uh, regardless of how they are normalized uh, they they will remain orthogonal to each other 